Welcome. It's uh, Monday the 17th of February. Now one of the things that's concerned me that I've mentioned a few times about this outbreak is the possible adverse effects on women and their unborn babies. So for example in the SARS outbreak of 2002-2003 there was actually a 25% uh, case fatality rate amongst a cohort of women that were studied in Hong Kong who were pregnant when they contracted SARS-1. So that was, that was pretty terrifying. Fortunately, that outbreak was contained. And, and we know there's an 85% um, sequence commonality between the genetics of the SARS-1, which caused the 2002-03 outbreak, and the current SARS-2 virus, coronavirus, which is causing the current COVID-19 outbreak. And in the 1918 epidemic, which again, I'm not comparing this to that, it's just interesting, but 2.6% was the overall case fatality rate, but it was 37% amongst women who were pregnant. <clears throat> the other part of background here is we've known about vertical uh, transmission for quite a long time, when, when um, mothers can transmit things to the babies. So the classic example we, we, we all learn about is rubella. German measles, which can cause trouble in the first trimester of pregnancy, leading to miscarriages and all sorts of uh, fetal abnormalities. And of course, HIV, um, children born to mothers that are HIV positive can themselves be HIV positive. So we really need some data on this. So I've actually found um, an article on this. So I'm, I'm going to look at that now. Um, but first of all, let's think about the types of transmission. <clears throat> so if, if that's you, and this is me, then I can infect you, you can infect me. That's a horizontal transmission. But if we have mum here, and she passes it on to baby, then that's vertical transmission. It's also known as perinatal transmission because it occurs around about the time of birth. So that's what this study looks at. And, and, and before we start, I'm going to give you the bottom line. <clears throat> the news is actually looking fairly promising at the moment. So this was a, a study in The Lancet of the 12th of February. And as usual, I'll put a link to that study <clears throat> on, the, on, the, um, on the notes right at the bottom. Now, it's the clinical characteristics of interuterine vertical transmission. So that's mother down to baby. Transmission potential of the COVID-19 infection in nine pregnant women. So this is only a study of nine women, but it's all we've got at the moment. Now, it's a single centre study, which is always a bit of a problem <coughs> because it means it was only in one. It was all done only in one centre. Um, but it was uh, it was also retrospective, which is looking back. So it's always better to do prospective studies, really, because retrospective studies, things can be forgotten. Anyway, it's, it's what we've got. I mean, it's, it, overall, it was a good study. You know, I read it and it's a good study. You read it yourself. So the study aimed to evaluate the clinical characteristics of COVID-19 in pregnancy. That's the coronavirus disease of 2019 caused by the SARS coronavirus 2 virus as we're now calling it in pregnancy and interuterine vertical that's perinatal in this case transmission potential of COVID-19 infection so can it go from mother down to baby because you might remember um, a few days ago I did a study on um, we reported on a study where there was a baby who was infected at uh, 36 hours of age which was uh, I don't think the baby was too ill, but it was, uh, it's not what we want. So the method used in this Lancet study, um, clinical records, laboratory results and chest CT scans were retrospectively reviewed for nine pregnant women. That's all they found, nine pregnant women. All had laboratory confirmed COVID-19 pneumonia. Now they go into detail in how they knew this, and the, uh, the, the testing, the real-time um, preliminaries chain reaction testing that they did for this was well done it was all properly done uh, as, as, as is um, the guidelines from the Chinese Centre for Disease Control. Now what were the findings here from this Lancet study of 2000, uh, 2020 February the 12th? 
<coughs> well, the findings. Um, well, they tested for SARS in the uh, in the amniotic fluid. That's the fluid that surrounds the baby. And in the uh, the cord blood after the baby was born, the, the blood from the umbilical cord. And they tested the, the baby's throat. And they also tested the breast milk. Now, the good news here is all of these things were negative for the virus, despite the mothers having active disease between the 36th and the 38th week of pregnancy, when most of these babies were delivered. So the babe, so there was no, there was no SARS-2, that's, that's the disease that causes COVID, and that's the virus that causes the COVID-19 disease. That was not found in amniotic fluid, cord blood, or the baby's throats. And it wasn't found in breast milk either. <clears throat> now, I must say, this somewhat surprised me because um, MERS can be transmitted by camel milk from infected camels. But it appears this one isn't from this study of nine. So, so far, so good. Now, nine women had a cesarean section in the late third trimester. So th these were basically nearing term. So that was fine. Now, the reason they had uh, cesarean sections, they actually had different medical reasons for this. And the fear of the baby getting um, COVID-19 was only one factor. So it wasn't the only factor that necessitated the cesarean sections. <clears throat> but the women presented with, with the COVID-19 disease, as we would expect. So seven out of the nine had a fever. Four had a cough. Three had the muscle pain, the myalgia. Two had a sore throat. Two had malaise. One had diarrhea, actually. I didn't write that down, but one presented with diarrhea. And five had lymphopenia. Now, unfortunately, we've come to see this um, in this condition that <coughs> people with the condition have have a, a lower level of uh, lymphocytes in their blood. And that's a problem because lymphocytes are the very white cells that produce the produce the uh, antibodies, the immunoglobulins that are going to fight the infection. So two cases were monitored for fetal distress, but it didn't seem bad enough for them to do anything about it. Uh no severe, not developed uh, severe COVID-19 pneumonia or died as a result. Right, so what, what this is saying is that the women all had uh, COVID-19, they all had the infection, but they didn't get the severe form, which we looked at yesterday can affect up to 19%. So none of these women had severe form. So they had the disease, they had some consolidation in their lungs, they had some infiltrates in their lungs, but they didn't get severe COVID-19 disease and they didn't get pneumonia or severe pneumonia and none of them died. So whereas in the SARS-1, from the study we have, the death rate was 25%, here the death rate was zero. And uh, none of the mums went on to develop severe disease and none of the mums went on to develop severe pneumonia. Now... This is a little surprising because very often viral infections can be more severe in pregnancy because in pregnancy, the whole level of the immune system of the mother is kind of toned down a bit because you don't want the mother to reject the, the, the fetus. So pregnant women are somewhat immunocompromised, but despite that, none of them develop pneumonia and none of them developed severe disease. They all had COVID-19, coronavirus disease, they all had it, but they didn't get severe forms. Nine live births or by cesarean section, but none of the babies had a neonatal asphyxia. So the babies were actually born fa fairly healthy. So, so that, that was really remarkably encouraging that um, none of the babies got this infection and the ba the, uh, at birth. And so everything that they tested, so that the milk, the, the neonatal throat swabs were all, all negative. So that means that the baby that got... Um, SAR, uh, COVID-2 from the SARS coronavirus 2 virus when he was 36 I don't know if it was he or she they were 36 hours old that means that they probably got it from droplet infection from the mother rather than this horrid, rather, rather than this um, vertical perinatal uh, infection now a big problem with this study was and I must say I was surprised that, that this study did not examine the mother's vaginal secretions to see if that contained a virus or not. Because, of course, if it had been a vaginal delivery, then the baby's eyes could have come into contact with the mother's vagina, 
which of course is the most natural thing in the world and is very good normally for baby immune stimulation. Contact with a mother's vagina in a healthy birth is, is, is very good. It, it exposes the baby to a variety of bacteria that it's good for them to be exposed to. It's a very healthy thing to happen, but <clears throat> obviously with a section it can't happen. And uh, in, this, in this case, they didn't record whether the virus bit was being secreted by the, by the mother's vagina. So we don't know that. Would have been nice to know because that, that then that, that could have helped us to decide whether to allow normal vaginal deliveries uh, in future. Um, now the interpretation of these results, where does this get us? The clinical characteristics of COVID-19 pneumonia in pregnant women were similar to those for non-pregnant adults who developed the disease. In other words, what this is saying <clears throat> is that the pregnant mums who got COVID-19 <coughs> had essentially the same disease presentation and the same disease level of severity as you or me. So that was good. Pregnancy in this small sample doesn't seem to make the mother's condition any worse and did not transmit the infection on to their neonates. So no evidence for interuterine infection caused by vertical transmission from the mother to the baby in the woman who developed COVID-19 pneumonia in late pregnancy. Now, I know I've just said they didn't get bad pneumonia, but they did have some infiltrates, but they didn't develop severe clinical pneumonia. So it seems that a lot of people that get this disease do get some infiltrates into the alveoli, just fluid collecting there in the alveolar air sacs but not enough to cause uh, a severe pneumonia. If you like, I suppose it's a mild pneumonia, just some infiltrates. Now, all the mothers were given nasal oxygen. Now, nasal oxygen, we give this all the time just through nasal cannulas, and it only gives oxygen at two liters per minute. So it's relatively low flow oxygen. They were given antibiotics to prevent secondary infection, which I'm happy with. And none were given steroids to reduce the inflammation, which seems to be the current thinking. None corticosteroids reduce inflammation. Because this infiltrate here, of course, is caused by the inflammation. That's what causes that. And the steroids will suppress the inflammation. <clears throat> and the hope there is that if you su suppress the inflammation with the steroids, you're going to reduce the lung infiltrate. That's the hope. But of course, steroids also inhibit the immune system and prevent us combating the virus properly. So the balance of opinion in these doctors seem to be that they would rather have the, uh, the, the active immune system working, not suppressed by the steroids, because the mothers didn't have severe pneumonia. So that seemed to be their thinking. So excellent news, none of the mothers developed uh, severe pneumonia. Now this was done, the diagnosis here was done by chest CT scan. Now, a chest X-ray is a relatively low amount of radiation. A chest CT scan is a lot of radiation. So, I was, uh, well, um, in, and the article didn't say whether these were done before or after delivery. I just hope they were done after delivery because that's an awful lot of X-rays to expose babies to. Uh, we do not want to be irradiating pregnant women. We take stringent measures not to do that at work. And all women who could potentially be in, in pregnancy age are asked if they could possibly be pregnant and then we won't x-ray them. So I do hope these were done after the babies were delivered. Eight of them show typical findings of the chest CT images. That, that's the multiple patchy grass ground shadows in the lungs. So, so this, we've looked at this before, the shadows. The shadows in the lungs. Like this. Yeah, the lungs. <clears throat> and it, show, it showed some, some shadowing in the lung, which would be light patches on a normal chest x-ray. But these were done with, with CT scans. So, but that's what we expect normally in COVID-19 disease, a degree of uh, infiltration in the lungs. Normally not bad enough to cause hypoxia in the individual. So, interesting study. Um limited size of study, relatively small study, only nine patients. Um, so 
can't conclude too much from a study of that size, but um, encouraging nonetheless that the babies didn't seem to get COVID-19 from their mothers and the mothers didn't get COVID-19 disease more seriously than any other adult who, who would get the disease. So it looks like this is different from um, MERS and SARS and uh, the 1819 influenza imp epidemic, which, a pandemic, which was caused a completely different virus. Now, it's only a small study, and it seems every, every time we talk about this virus, we have to be uh, um, measuring our words because there's so many unknowns about it. But uh, on the basis of that study, I was encouraged. The mums have a normal progress of the disease, seem to have the same prognosis as anyone else. And the babies weren't uh, weren't affected by um, perinatal transmission. What we need, of course, is a study with much bigger numbers. But until then, that's the best we've got to go on. But I must say, I do feel somewhat encouraged after reading that study. So do read it for yourself. I'll put the link in the uh, in the description.